Hello people and welcome to Crypto Exposed. Okay guys, got two things I want to cover here today regarding Hedera. So we have uh, first and foremost a post by uh, Genfinity and this is an interview that uh, King Solomon had and you can see uh, Lehman Bird is there and also uh, Mance, Mance Harmon. And so I found this just interesting because this is something that you guys need to understand in terms of where crypto technology is going. And this is from Lima Baird's mouth and I completely agree this is where it will be ultimately in the end. So um, Lima Baird says, and this is just a quote from the uh, from this clip that you can see on the screen. He says, um, Hedera specifically is going to become part of every part of the planet, every part of business and education and social and governance and entertainment. Um, yeah, I completely agree that that's what's going to happen with this technology. And this is why I say um, this stuff doesn't happen overnight because this is something that's just going to change the whole world. Like think about the Internet, right? Our life before the Internet was very different to what it is now, completely different. And that's what crypto technology is going to do. It really is. It's going to change many industries, many people's day to day lives really is going to have a huge impact on the world. And one of the things that he's talking about here as well is like he says, you know, it's going to be being utilized and people won't even know it. Like to them, it's going to be almost like invisible. And he said, like, he likened it to like electricity. He's like, you know, when you see electricity, you're not thinking about the currents flowing through wires or anything like that. You just see the light on, right? You don't really think about it like that. But it's electric currents that's flowing through wires, etc. that's allowing it to happen. And that's what DLT crypto technology will be. I agree that what we're talking about there is essentially mass adoption, right? It'll be a thing of you just, you know, let's just say you purchase something and it's being utilized through a Hedera Hashgraph service, you know, some kind of company. Like for example, Drop, right? You got merchant services for, via Drop. They make a payment to a merchant. Um, they're utilizing the Drop app, for example, but they don't realize that the Drop app is uh, basically powered by the Hashgraph. So yes, they're using Drop and they're happy in terms of using that, but they don't realize in the back end that it's the actual Hedera Hashgraph that's making it all possible. And this isn't a bad thing. This is a good thing, guys, because you got to understand, like for a lot of people, when it comes to like new technology, people are weary, right? So if you used to say, hey, you know, just jump over to this crypto technology it's great like they might be like eh, i'm not so sure about that i've heard people call it magic internet money and i've heard about people losing their money and all this kind of stuff you know there's stigma and there's concern they'd rather stick with what they're used to right what they know but if something's just being used in the background basically and they're not even realizing it well you know there's nothing for them to worry about right so that's what mass adoption is. It's when it can be utilized and people don't even have to know that they're actually utilizing crypto technology in the end. So I think that's a real great point. And again, as he was saying, like all the different aspects of what this technology is going to change. Yes, is you know, I absolutely agree. And that's why, again, when I look at Hadira and I've shown you all these different use cases that Hadira can cater to. I think Hadira will be at the forefront in that regard because yes, I do think they will change education, uh, social governance, entertainment. I do think they'll change all these things. Um, and so uh, this is again why I do look at Hadira as a good investment overall because I've seen all the different use cases. I've seen the diversity that they have in terms of how many different types of uh, utility they can bring via the network. So. Um, I just found this really interesting. Um, it's only a small clip. I mean, I'm assuming there's the full, um, the full interview probably on Gen Finity's, uh, either X profile or on their YouTube. So obviously feel free to go and have a look if you want to try and see it in full. But just seeing that 35 second clip, um, uh, that we've got here, I was just like, that tells me all I need to know, really. You know, not to say that I wouldn't watch the interview, I would, but just seeing that, I was like, I completely agree. And, Again, it lets me know that my mind's on the right track when I'm thinking about this stuff. So I thought that was really interesting. Okay, um, the second thing that I just wanted to get onto here, we actually have the HBAR Foundation um, addressing the uh, the controversy with Shane Higdon, right? And um, I just thought I'd you know give my response in regards to this and just tell you essentially what they're saying. So. I'll be honest with you, I kind of scrolled through this because it is a very, very long post, I'll be honest with you. So I go and I got to a point where I was like, okay, like, where where are we essentially going with this, right? So 
Uh, long story short, what they've said is that um, th- they're basically trying to prove as to why they think the HBAR Foundation deserves to be where it is and, and why they deserve to continue to exist, right? Because a lot of people have kind of said the HBAR Foundation should be disbanded. Um, I'll be honest with you, I wasn't entirely sure on my thoughts of that. I hadn't really thought it through enough of that at this point. So I- I'm-, I'm not going to say I agree with that or disagree with it. I, I really wasn't thoroughly at a final thought in that regard um i think that might be a bit excessive i think maybe more just make sure that you know the right people are in charge and it's being managed the right way i think that would be better than just completely disbanding the foundation because they are ultimately helping with hadira's adoption you know so to me that's if you if we can stick to that and you know have the right people um in charge and and not be you know overpaying people then i think that's that would be the better option but i've not really fleshed my thoughts on that completely so maybe i could change if i like you know did a bit more research and thought about it a bit deeper but anyway um yeah so they've kind of addressed this it's it's not it's not a terrible response but it's not the greatest so let me just tell you some you know little things that i've got from it so they basically address like the the salary and they say look um the salary you know is going to remain private it's not something that we're just going to share uh, but they're saying that look they're, they're in a competitive market which means you know when they're trying to get people um they've got to be competitive with the prices okay um let me answer that so I, I, okay i did say uh when i covered this topic before that um vitalik buterin had mentioned that um the Algrand Foundation was apparently, you know, paying millions to their staff in total, which it let, it equated to about four hundred and sixty odd thousand dollars per person, which again, it is a lot of money. Um, my thing with that is, okay, you can say that, but my thing is like everything should be based on what the company is earning, right? Like, for example, if I, if I'm a startup company, right? And let's just say I have, Let's just say I have a million dollars, right, to spend, I, and I'm a startup company. If I'm paying like, you know, a, a manager hundreds of thousands of dollars, that's a huge chunk of of the money that I have already gone. So my thing is, well, how are you equating the rest of the money, right? How are you equating the rest of the money? Like you, you're taking a huge chunk straight away, just putting that to, you know, just like a manager or a CEO or whatever. So, yes, they probably have got the money because, yeah, there's a lot of people invested in HBAR, but this is the thing. It's like, it's at the behest of the holders, right? So, um, in terms of, like, it being competitive, I mean, it's hard for me to say because would Shane Higdon have stayed even if he wasn't getting these excessive bonuses? I don't know. Maybe he wouldn't have. Maybe that's really what they needed to get him on board to seal the deal. I, I, I really can't say. So, that's not really a question I can answer. Um, but I still feel like this is excessive, to be honest with you, in regards to that that answer. I, I'm not like, yes, I kind of understand what you're saying, but I still think that, you know, um, this doesn't have to be to that kind of level, the kind of money that we was hearing. Like, it, it does sound like a lot to me, to be honest with you. Um, then after that, they've basically given you like a huge laundry list of, of, of like the accomplishments that the HBAR Foundation have done. Now, look, I'm, I'm not here to like knock that at all because yes you know you should show your accomplishments because yeah you should prove why you are good to be here and why you should be good for the network and why you should stay so i'll be honest with you while i'm saying like you know it's long and whatever and this is why i kind of got to just okay let me just skip through because i'm just reading all of their like you know positive outcomes or their positive things that they've done um i'm not saying that to be negative i'm saying that's fine um and it's good to see that stuff but I'm I'm aware of this, so I don't really need to like really order the list. I do enough videos on, on HBAR um, to know like what the HBAR Foundation have accomplished. So uh, you know, to me, I was just like reading over stuff that I've covered numerous times in the past. Um, but no, I'm I'm not against them doing that because yeah, like show us what you've done, like prove your worth. Like I I, I think that's fine. Um, that that I had no issue with. And um, the last thing that I did was a bit like, uh, this is where I was a bit like, okay, you've probably not answered it in the best way here. They said, um, we are not primarily motivated by profits, but rather by supporting the continued growth of the Hedera ecosystem. However, we are not a non-profit and do not operate like a charity. And when I heard that, I'm like, 
it, it kind of sounds like you're going in and out of what you're, you know, trying to explain yourself as because, you know, you're saying that you're a foundation, but then you're saying like, you know, we are primarily motivated to grow Hedera, but we're not a non-profit. So we don't, it's, it's kind of like saying, yeah, we, you know, we're a foundation, but we're not a foundation. Like, do you see what I'm saying? It was, it was a bit vague to me, to be honest with you. Um, so I think that specific part, probably not the best to put in because it really did seem like you're trying to kind of like trying to speak to the both sides of your mouth, to be honest with you. It's like you're trying to, say one thing and then say the opposite thing within the same sentence so um not the best answer but overall um what do i think about this response it's not great um i I do think in terms of what they've accomplished was good to see because i do again i think it kind of justifies their existence so i think it's good in that regard but um there were a few things that i was a bit like uh yeah you're not great in terms of how you're explaining this um I mean, at the end of the day, this is the thing that I will say. Um, if Hedera want the HBAR Foundation to stay, they will stay ultimately, un- unless there's a very big um, backlash where it's too big to ignore. Um, we'll, we'll see. We'll see how people feel about this. I mean, don't get me wrong. I've seen a couple of responses and they they weren't really thrilled with this. Um, I think the thing with this kind of stuff is you have to let like the 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 dust settle, right, and see how people are after that. If people are still really negative and it's still becoming a prominent issue, then yeah, maybe they have to look at this differently. But um, as of right now, it's still kind of a fresh wound, so I can understand that there's still a lot of hysteria. Um, we'll see. We'll we'll see how people feel at the end of this. For me, um, as I say, it wasn't really the best response, but they did like give a lot of good answers in regards to what they have done. So they have done a lot in terms of growing Hadira's ecosystem, but that, that can't really be denied. So I think that's what really helped. I think the other stuff that they were talking about wasn't great. Like, for example, they're, you know, saying salaries are going to be private. Mm, to a degree, I get that. But one, you can look at it through the blockchain because they're getting paid via the token. So that's how they got found out in the first place. And two, um, you know, there are, places usually for companies where you can find out people's salary so you know why do they necessarily have to be private again that's a choice for the company I'm, I'm not saying it's right or wrong i'm just saying that there are other places other companies where you can find out a ceo salary or something along those lines so i'm just saying that not all companies are operating like that so make of that what you will but um yeah I, i'm kind of again I, i'm like waiting to see how things continue to unfold from here but the way I look at it at the moment is that we're in a bull market, guys. And to me, I'm interested to see where HBAR can go within this bull market because it shouldn't be long now before we get to alt season. And we'll see how HBAR performs from there because, you know, this is the moment, right? Like we should be in position now to, you know, to profit from HBAR, right? So for me, I'm like, let's see what this brings. I'm, I'm not going to sell right now because, you know, we're in a bull market. So I'm willing to see this through at this point to see how it performs in the bull market um after that yeah we'll we'll see what happens from there because that will be a a good indication as well as to see where hadira is at and how it's being viewed so uh, at this point in time i'm going to see what happens but um yeah i'm i'm still willing to kind of see what happens with the hbar foundation and shane higdon going forward but what do you guys think with the topics that i've covered today in this video Let me know your thoughts, guys. I'd be interested to hear. Thank you very much for watching this. If you did like it, please remember to drop a comment, like, and subscribe. But until next time, take care.